<laughs> hey, Katie Girls, it's Sunday, August 8th, 2021, and welcome to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race All-Stars Season 6, Episode Number 8, Snatch Game of Love. So for Aww. those of you that don't know who we are, uh, welcome to the show. It's a little thing that we do where we talk about RuPaul's Drag Race, the American uh, seasons. My name is Gary. With me is my ever-fabulous co-host. Hello, everyone. It's Damon. Welcome. Yes. So it's the infamous All-Stars version of Snatch Game. So celebrities, guests come on. They try to woo, you know, get wooed by a queen who's doing an impersonation. Hilarity mm -hmm. ensues. Or we throw vegetables, whichever. No one really wins. At least in the game part of it, the whole like snatch yes. game part of it. Not really a game. It's sort of just like a premise because <laughs> yeah. there's no winner. Yeah. It's almost like a game from like, you know, where nobody wins. Yeah. <sighs> Anyways, that being said, you want to jump right in to our first segment? Let's do it. Racers, start your engines. And may the best drag queen win. All right. So overall thoughts on the snatch game of love here in our first segment where we put the pedal to the metal. Uh, Damon, <laughs> what did you think of the show? I'm intrigued. <laughs> so I wrote down, get the memo or get out. And it's kind of a simple Simple thing that we've talked about several times whenever you do Snatch Game, whenever any any show, any drag race Snatch Game, there is one simple tenant, one simple memo that you always need to abide by, no matter who you're playing, no matter what you're doing, make Rue laugh. That is the goal. Mm hmm it, you don't need to look exactly like the person. You don't need to, like, have a great costume. You don't need to, like, you know, be, like, a perfect, like, vocal impersonation of the person. I mean, that helps. But reality is, at the end of the day, make Rue laugh. Mm -hmm. And if you can't do that, might as well go. Simple as that pretty fucking simple like i i don't understand why you would make certain choices knowing full well that it's not going to work i am talking to you trinity um point blank period like you were Oh, was there a sound clip? Uh-oh. No, but I mean, I could play. <laughs> I mean, it's true, though. I'm just, it's, so, okay, let's just be honest. Like, not only, not only did you pick Whitney Houston, but, like, you know she's been done on Snatch Game of Love before. Right? And it was done terribly by, I mean, not terribly, just not as good yeah. by someone else, Monet Exchange, um, who just didn't quite, again, this is, there's a memo that needs to happen here. And it wasn't as funny. It could have been better, but it was not that good. Mm -hmm. um, and this was even worse. <sighs> Having said that, there are other queens that, you know, I, I feel that this was the thing too. Um, this was a very lopsided um, snatch game. <clears throat> like, we got some super, like, stellar people in the first round. Right. And then it was, the second one was, eh, yeah. it was okay. Right. So, What about you? Well, what I said was a real competition, sort of. Mm. Um, so let's talk about Snatch Game of Love. Infamously, you know, they they did Snatch Game in the regular seasons. And I 
didn't they do snatch game in all stars like yes once or something and then they switched it over yeah. to this version so they have done they did um snatch game at c or something like that it was very much like a like a like nautical yeah. yeah kind of thing um kind of like love boat moment mm -hmm. and that's kind of where they went with it uh one season and then we i think for the past I know at least since four, they've done Snatch Game of Love. Right. I have to see if they did it in three. Hmm. Don't mind me, folks. That's okay. Keep going. So our first group that you were discussing, we have Ginger Minge as Phyllis Diller. We have Trinity K. Bonet as Whitney Houston. And Kylie Sonique Love as Dolly Parton. Mm-hmm. And then their celebrity match for the this match game, which is really what it is, is uh why did his name go out of my head? Cyan Jackson. Dan. Thank you. Because <laughs> I was gonna say the wrong name so bad. I had another name in my head and I was like, I don't think that's right. Anyways. Yeah, so then it's Cheyenne Jackson. So yeah, like the first round, first trio was the one where I laughed and I laughed mm -hmm. a lot. And I was really shocked at like how well two of the three did. Um, that being said, I have some nitpicks. <laughs> Miss Ginger mm -hmm. Minge, if you're gonna uh -oh. do Phyllis Diller, I have a couple things. Like I think uh -oh. you were doing a interpretation of Phyllis Diller, but I don't think you were actually doing Phyllis Diller, which is complicating things on my feeling about this episode because I really thought it was funny, but I don't think it was exactly Phyllis Diller. Um, and I got a nitpick about this fucking necklace, bitch. It is too <laughs> big for what you're wearing. Why on earth are we wearing this like bib necklace with this outfit? And then, like, the strands are hanging out. Like, it's just, it's a mess. It's a mess, girl. You know better. Carrie has an opinion. <laughs> Shocker, right? <laughs> well, that's okay, because Miss Kylie Sonique Love doesn't get out of this scathing either, because she was using a uh, breastplate. And notably, the way the breastplate was cut, the reason mm -hmm. she has this red like spangly bowie thing around her neck is because it's supposed to be covering up the seam line between the breastplate and her actual skin. The problem is she didn't adhere it to the breastplate. It's just sitting there. So when she keeps moving around, you keep seeing these weird gap like kind of things. And I'm like, really girl? Like, and what is ironic to me about it, David is I'm like, but now they make breastplates that come all the way up to here. Like, so you can't even mm -hmm. clock where the sieve is. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So there's that. And I do want to give props for this. If there is anybody who has ever looked the part of Whitney Houston, it's this bitch. Mm -hmm. I could not take my eyes off her, even though she's not doing a very good job. <laughs> It I came. had to take my eyes off her because it was crash and burn. <laughs> I have such a like visceral, like I will, I will own as me, but like when someone is bombing, mm. like really bad, it is hard for me to watch to the point where I have to like pause and like step away because it's just like oh no and and oh she, just right from the get go. Mm. <sighs> I thought she looked fucking stellar like if the, if i'm gonna go see trinity k bonet in person i want to see her do whitney houston like that's mm -hmm. that's the thing after seeing like how well she like replicated this look and i thought it was she looked flawless she just unfortunately didn't have the personality to deliver in the show mm -hmm. um and then we have the second trio the oh my okay and wow so, yeah, this, this, mm -hmm. this is a thing. This is an issue. Um, 
I just I don't know how to feel about this. Like, I didn't hate, I, but I also wasn't enjoying it. I guess is the key thing. It became a um, just a mess. I I don't I don't like. Okay, I'll make it like this. I'll put it like this. You got like look at this picture and um cut off the heads. Two of them could be anybody. Okay. Could have literally been anybody. Because they're just wearing pantsuits. Mm. And then our our suits. Like right. they're you know. Eureka's the only one that, to me, the character is in the everything. Mm-hmm. And is it is it a perfect interpretation of, of Divine? No. But it's enough. Um, I was not a f- well, I don't know what you're getting to. I was I was not a fan of the way this wig looked on her. Well, before we get to that, so Fortune Feeps <laughs> is, is their match, just as a, uh-huh. as a reference point. But are you referring to this? Yeah, that shit. Yeah, that, that shit, shit about the right wig. There. Yeah, that shit. Yeah, that it wasn't even it, it wasn't even attached to her head. <laughs> it's like very very, it was probably holding holding on by like by like holding on to God's unchanged hand. That's what like, just. just <laughs> child holding on to those two hairs i was so irritated with this i was like yeah. what the fuck is that mm-hmm. it makes me think she borrowed this that she borrowed this look from somebody who else who does divine and got lucky because the outfit basically fit and the hair kind of fits but eureka got a big old head and mm-hmm. it makes me think that this wig is not meant for her head and that's why she was having these issues that it's, it's pulling away and it doesn't look mm-hmm. properly like placed and yeah. Yeah. Anything else? <laughs> um Pandy, 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 Pandy. Uh you know, like I like the idea of Kim Cattrall. The issue was is that she was doing the Sex of the City character and it just wasn't like enough funny yeah i mean it was kind okay of, but not really oh how do i put this um it could have been funny mm-hmm. if you had cranked it up to like a hundred i'm talking and this is going to be a really bad like joke but i'm talking like south park paris hilton mm. like if you're going to be a whole like, if you're going to play up that, like, I'm the sex-crazed cougar, Kim Cattrall, like, from Sex in the City thing, then play it the fuck up. Right. Like, have a have a rag and cough into it and, you know, something. Like, do something to lie, like, like you're, you're, you're sexual. Your right. pussy is burning. Have a fan and just, like, fan your coochie. Just, just right. something, like... Yeah. Because the first thing, I, the thing I said when to Jim... When I found out that her um, snatcher, which are whatever, which I think they call snatch catcher, is what they ended up calling, was Fortune Feaster. I was like, all of Pandora's Pandora Box's jokes are gone because it's a woman. But she could have played it up like she was yes, interested she could have. in having sex with a woman. She could have, yeah. but like if 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 again if. That's what I kind of said myself. So like, like, yeah, she she did okay with it. She kind of swung with it. You know, I'll try anything once. That was one of the jokes I said. I remember her saying, "I was like, hey, cool. That kind of works." Right. But um, there's just there were just so many moments that could have been done. Mm. I'm like, I'm thinking, a la like, UGB as Eartha Kitt, like right. Right. that sensual, sexual, but like still funny. Yeah. Like that kind of shit, like that would have been perfect. Yeah, I um, think I would have, I would have liked to have seen Pandora do Jennifer Coolidge. 
Mm -hmm. Like if you're gonna if you're gonna keep on this trope that you're an older queen and you need to be, you know, a cougar and play older women, I think mm -hmm. she could have had more fun with that. Yeah. Kind of a personality and, and representation, but I don't know. Yeah. Um I am so conflicted about this. <laughs> So first off, I want to I want to make it clear. Kudos to Raja for doing Latoya Jackson. Mm -hmm. I did not see this coming. I did not know how this was going to go, and I thought she did pretty good. I will admit mm -hmm. that she got super fucking lucky that RuPaul gave her a insight to Latoya's personality and what's funny about it, because then, as Bussy Queen pointed out in her video, uh, Raja lobbed out like three joke examples in the exact same format that Rue had told her of earlier. So, mm -hmm. but the name of the game is to make RuPaul laugh. So memo, right? Get that memo. Yeah. So I will say this. She did pretty good as Latoya, like in her representation, there were times mm -hmm. like, this is the same thing with, with Trinity's Whitney. There were moments where I was like, damn, like, if I didn't know any better, I would think you would try to do this for a show. Uh -huh. Like, you would try to portray that yeah. person. Now, the only problem that Raja has is that she's not tiny. Mm -hmm. Like, that was comical to me when, as Latoya, she goes to walk past Fortune. And I was like, oh, she tall. <laughs> like, La Latoya is, like, you know, five foot something. Like, you know, she's, she's yeah. diminutive. She's petite. And I was like, you are not. <laughs> so this doesn't quite add up. But mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I thought it was it was decent. Um, so, yeah, it was pretty good. I, I I'll, I'll talk about this later. But yes, I agree with with you about Raja picking the ball up, the lob that she literally got from Rue and then running with it. Yeah, for sure. <sighs> so this was an interesting comedic moment. Girl, Fortune decides not to, to select any of the contestants because she says that she's taken or whatever, which is technically true. Fortune in real life is engaged or now married. I think they were going to get married this year. Um, and technically, Cheyenne is also married. So... In my mind, I was like, okay, whatever. And they're both gay. So that was like the more <laughs> ironic of this whole setup was I was like, they bring these like, you know, out celebrities on to play like Snatch Game of Love. And then it doesn't matter anyways. You know, I mean, we all know yeah. that like, it's not meant to be real. But what cracks me up the most is like, they just kind of screw around with the whole thing. And then they do this whole like engagement to each other moment. I was like, "Wow, okay, mm -mm -mm. we're just like we're just gonna play with all the all the the expectations, I guess." In this case, so that was Snatch Game of Love. <sighs> FYI, yes, because we because you had asked the question earlier. So, in the Snatch Game of Love started in season four of All Stars. Yes, of All Stars. Okay, before that. They did just all star. They just did Snatch Game. Okay. Um, and they only did that in season three. Um, oh, okay. And that would have been. It was the an all stars that Bendela was on. Yeah, it was yeah because it was all star Snatch Game, and that was the season that we got the awful Trixie Mattel RuPaul um, situation. What I'm calling it like it is. I, I ain't playing with y'all no more. Like. <laughs> Mama, this I is love I love pit stop specifically for this reason because they kept bringing it up and I was just like like they had the hope like the screen went black and it was they are one of the moments where like behind like Trixie you hear like winner winner chicken dinner and I was just like oh mom <laughs> like no they did, right but they did right and um um but then i don't think i was looking i don't think they did they didn't do drag oh drag race 
They did not do. Um, woo, words are hard. Uh, Snatchscape in season two, and I don't think they did it in season one either. Okay. Oh wait, nope, I'm wrong. They did it in season two. Um, it was okay. literally the second episode. Whew, okay. That was my bad. That's I don't right. think they did it in season one. I think they did something different. I no, think that's I the year they did the whole they did the, um, the Paris laughing kind of thing. Yeah. So, all right, you ready to move on to our next segment? Sure. All right, kittens, it's time to cruise the runway. Category is pop art, which I actually thought was original. Mm-hmm. The theme, that is. Yes, yes, the theme. We'll yes. get to the looks here in just a second. Uh, so, yeah. <clears throat> when there's <laughs> less queens on the runway, you get more time to scrutinize what they're presenting. Mm-hmm. So that being mm-hmm. said, Mr. Damon, before we do uh, serve Swerve Nerve, uh, what were your thoughts in general on, on their presentations or the runway? Well, as you mentioned, it, there's you know fewer queens, so there's only so much you can do. Um, I said there were two standouts. Okay. And there it was Trinity and Ginger. Okay. And that's it. <laughs> like everything I mean Ginger had the luxury of going first so I will give it that much and because she had the luxury of going first at least in our mind right. like in our in the you know episode right she gave you what you when you meet when you think of pop art that's kind of one of the things you think of you think the Andy Warhol the Marilyn Monroe like multiple you know pictures of the same about multiple colored picture of the same thing right and she took it to that level that worked. Mm-hmm. Um, and then after that, everyone else kind of was a comparison. And to me, it mm-hmm. didn't succeed. That's fair. Because you had three queens, including Ginger, that did kind of the same thing. That like, oh, hey, I'm going to type pop art into, I think, <laughs> I think this is a joke from Bussy Queen, so I'm not taking it. But like, I'm going to type in pop art and I'm going to get the first thing I see, and that's what I'm going to put out there. And Trinity stands out because it was different, not just because of the message, Mm -hmm. but also because of the message, but also because it was unique. It wasn't what we saw like three times. It was definitely comic, you know, book, you know, very like that 60s kind of vibe, but also she added it to her makeup and everything else. Like there's a like the harsh, the like harsher lines and stuff that just really, really, really worked. Right. So, yeah, I was thoroughly impressed with those two. Um, so I said Night of a Thousand Faces. Ha <laughs> Literally. Because it felt like Kimono Gate all over again. <laughs> Madonna Gate. Yes. Where everybody wore a fucking kimono. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's kind of how I, how I felt about that. Um, so let's take a look at these uh, presentations, shall we? Uh, as we were saying earlier, first up, Miss Ginger Minge. Uh, she definitely gives this this really kind of fun, very colorful, um, I thought of paper dolls, like how you cut out their clothes and just kind of stick it on them because this outfit is very two dimensional. Yeah. Like, cause it's very flat, like on, on that axis, so to speak. Um, mm-hmm. I appreciated the prop in the beginning. I really appreciated the hair, even though. I think was it Bussy? Somebody kind of commented on the fact that Trixie, yeah, that it was very like Target, 
you know, yeah. um, Halloween or whatever. And I was like, bitch, no, it wasn't. Um, I mean, sure, it could yeah. it be bigger, could it be more? Absolutely. But that hair that she's wearing is the hair in the pictures. Yeah, no. it fits the theme. Correct. Like, that's what I liked about it, was that it fit the whole, like, theme that she gives. Because I personally love that when she t- turns around of the head. Okay. As well. Yeah, remember, like, it's, so she had the wig. Like, these pictures on her outfit are the wig, like, the front wig. And you would think it would just, like, repeat on the back. But no, it doesn't. When she turns around, it's the backs of the heads. Like, you get the back of the wig and all that stuff. And I just thought that was really cute. Oh, I didn't catch that. Oh, yeah. I caught that. I like that. I was too I really busy. Did. I was, if there was anything that distracted me, honestly, it's the different colored boots. Because at first I was uh, like, bitch, why are we wearing different colored boots? And then I realized that the gloves were different. And I was like, okay. And the gloves weren't the same colors as the boots. Or even mm-hmm. reverse. Like, it was very um, All primary colors. colors. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. So, definitely. Yeah. So, for me, th- yeah, this was a serve. Um, a, a really high serve. I don't know if I want to say nerve because it didn't oh. blow me away. But I was really impressed. I think I'll just give this a serve. Uh, it's a serve for me. Yeah. Next up, Kylie Sonique Love. Uh, okay. I will give this a serve, but it's a very soft serve. Um, it is, is it pop art kind of ish? Maybe a little. No. <laughs> No, Kylie, sweetie. <laughs> okay, thank you. For those that couldn't hear it clearly, <laughs> Jim <laughs> David's partner has an opinion about one yes. of the queens. <laughs> and yes, he does. <laughs> yes, he does. Yes, he does. So serve with this one only because it's it's. I get what she was going for. But she missed the mark. I think it was Trixie. It was either Trixie or, or one, someone, one, Trixie or Raja, that mentioned Raja um, Gemini. Correct. <laughs> On the pit stop. Uh, yeah. During pit stop. That mentioned she should have done like a Marilyn Monroe, like short, um, like wig, as opposed to this w- wig that she has on. I, I and, and if she had done that, I this would have been a, a much stronger serve. Yeah. Um, cause then it would have made sense a bit more. Hmm. So yeah, just cause it's your face on your face on your dress doesn't mean it's pop art. Gary. Um, <laughs> I'm really torn cause I don't like it. Mm. I don't, I don't like it. I mean the 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 I'm presuming they're faux foxtail fur wrap thing is fun. The hair seems undone, like it doesn't seem quite fully finished, and I think that's intentional. The cut of the dress is not an issue. The spaghetti straps on the front and around the back are not an issue. Her showing her crack of her ass is not an issue, although I think it's not necessary. Um, just because we've already taught, we've already critiqued that Kylie needs to stop relying on her body. Um, I just mm-hmm. don't care for the dress. Like I don't care for the for the front of it and what's going on with it. And here's the thing: if you follow her on social media, this dress is meant to be an homage to Barbie, as in Barbie the doll from Mattel, and that there's a apparently this doll of Barbie's where she's wearing a dress that's similar to this. Mm-hmm. It's not identical. That has Barbie's face on the front of it. And I think it's referred to as like the Warhol Barbie or something like that. Um, I don't know if that's the official name, but I was really kind of irritated because I was like, um, girl, mm-hmm. we, we live by this rule. If you have to explain it, it's a fail. Like, and that ah. was my concern. Did you see what I was talking and, about? Yeah, I see what you're talking about. 
And again, again, it's fuck it. It's not like then you should have done like the fucking curly hair of the Barbie doll. Like I'm looking at this picture because um, it, it didn't take me that long to find it, and I like the I like the concept. And if that's what you were sorry. Just it's really easy because I follow Kylie. Um, no, I know. I was that's why I've been looking down because I was looking for it as well. Because I was like, although you have to get past all the Dolly Parton shit. Um, yeah, yeah. But like the spoiler idea alert, behind, like, she it, released a Dolly Parton song, an homage song, which is actually kind of fun. Yeah. Um, but again, like you could have done something so much different than this right like the like the like the whole thing is weird to me because in kylie's it's this canary yellow with this hot electric lemonade pink color and that is Mm -hmm. not the colors of the original barbie the original barbie is like a is like a rose blush wine color and Uh like the graphic of the face is done way better like the dress is done better like like the hair is better i'm sorry barbie's way better than you kylie like this is just not it so that (laughs) Now that I've had to go back and look at the picture, it's a swerve. Yeah. Sorry, bitch. Don't care for it. It's not yeah. good. I just, I, I just, oh, you could have done that, like, just, like, like just, hey, like, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, yeah. you were, because you mentioned Jessica Rabbit as well, and then you mentioned Jessica mm. Rabbit, and then you mentioned, like, the, and then you show us this on your, 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 your Twitter and whatever, and probably on Instagram or whatever. Right. Like, you could have done this kind of hair. The like side swoop, like curl, yeah, it, like it's wave. A, it's definitely a lot more volume. And yeah, it, and it's if that had... it's kind of that siren, like mm-hmm. sexy vampy, like. And I get that. Yeah. And I think what Kylie's presenting, I hate to say it, and this is no disrespect to her, I'm getting more stripper. Like mm. burlesque, like I don't expect this outfit to stay on. I expect you to take it off and to have like pasties on your tatas. Like, <laughs> I, I, uh, how do I, like that's kind of how I feel about it. Like, I feel like it could have been more. Yeah. So I, I will, I gave it a soft serve. Um, because I think it's nice. But now that I've kind of like seen this, um, it's a sweater for me. Um, cause now it does, it, it doesn't feel like pop art, right? It feels like something that it's not supposed to be. Yeah. I don't know what it's supposed to be, but it's not, it's not working for me. It's not. Okay. Sorry. Move girl. on. Speaking of things that don't work, Miss Eureka. <laughs> Bitch. Sorry. I'm conflicted um, on this one too. Like I have so many issues with this. Like, first of all, your clutch, your purse is way too fucking big. I don't understand why we have an oversized purse with our pictures all over it in our hand. I'm lost on that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think the makeup was a good choice. It looked kind of mm-hmm. bad, in my opinion. And yet, the this Robin's Egg Aquamarine latex bodysuit under the, the shift dress, like silhouette wise like if i if i get rid of the if i if i sort of ignore the hair and i don't look at her face and i get rid of the purse (laughs) now i sound like raja or raven i'm like if i get rid of these elements like and i just kind of look at it if you just like take the head off and take the take the purse out of the hand (laughs) and i put a season one filter on this bitch i'm like okay (laughs) like like i don't necessarily dislike it but that being said i don't care for the way that the pictures are, are of her, all the headshots are used. Mm-hmm. I don't care for the fact that the hair doesn't match to the pictures. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I don't care for the fact that if you look or pay close enough attention, there are big buttons that go down the front of the dress that are mm-hmm. the exact same color as the latex suit underneath. And the reason why it bothers me is because the buttons don't stand out. Like the mm-hmm. buttons are, are not there for any purpose other than an aesthetic, they're non-functional. I think the buttons are actually white. I don't think so. But we're only looking mm. at this one picture. I don't have any more pictures to reference. But if they're white, then it's shitty that they don't come off as white because she's got white gloves with these like big either frilly ends or bangles. Looks like 
Yeah. And she's got white Come earrings. On. Come on. So to me, the buttons should be white to go with the shoes, to go with the gloves, to go with the earrings. But in this picture, they're not. They look the same color as the the undergarment. So I'm just like, okay, I don't understand. Oh, interesting. What? Okay. Well, go to Eureka's Twitter page and look at the picture. And you are right. They're the same color? Yep, they're blue. Yeah, I think that was a a misstep. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, I mean, obviously this is the, you know, professional photo, what have you, right. going on. Not what it looks like on the stage. When I look at that, like when I look at it, the picture that you have here, the buttons look white. And that's what I thought I saw when I looked at it again. And I also her makeup is way fun. better in the professional shoot than in this than what was presented mm -hmm. on the runway. And the hair looks better in the professional shoot than it does here. I think it's the same hair. I just think the color shit that they do for production washed it out and uh -huh. made it look like this crappy straw yellow where in the professional shoot it's definitely like pops of like yellow versus blonde mm -hmm. and like mixed together yeah she looks way better in the professional shot than she does on the runway although i still hate this purse one it's too big and two it annoys the shit out of me girl that you put flaps and then you you discolored like you intentionally went with other versions of the hair like of the of the pictures for the flap and i'm like no like that no that wasn't necessary it doesn't look good girl sorry yeah so i will say um this was nope can't even say it yet i'm still conflicted i'm still on the fence um, so since I'm so conflicted and on the fence, I'm going to go ahead and give it a swerve, swerve, swerve. I'm going to say no. Um, so I'm going to agree with you that it's a swerve. And here's where I'm going to finally come down on it. Your problem is you're going to get compared to the others on the runway. Mm -hmm. If if this was a. If nobody else had done something similar then maybe I wouldn't be as like judgmental yeah. or, or finicky or whatever picky, mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. but that's not what happened. Agreed. And I was looking at this hair and I get what she was going with it. And I, I kind of like the premise. Um, but my, my, like I have so many critiques, my big one being like, if you're going to put like the whole pop art thing and you're going to like your hair, your wig should match the, 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 the picture in the um on the dress yeah and i wonder why it doesn't yeah no i agree oh well. moving on pandora box this is our third contestant who put their face all over shit although i will oh i will agree with like um trixie and raja that at least she did a couple of things a little different. Like she added some like the um, comic like box and, and and things like that to kind of give it that that different feel. Mm -hmm. um, however, um, I hate that green dress. <laughs> I absolutely hate it. Okay, Michelle Vassage. And it's not because it's green. I know, I know. It doesn't. It doesn't look good. It doesn't fit right. I don't know if it's. I, uh, it's too big. It's too big. The green. The green dress is too big. The wap, like comic book burst, that's mm -hmm. applied to it. That's obviously not a part of the dress. Looks out of place. Mm -hmm. Um. Now here's like. So I'm curious to know what you think about this because technically. Her pictures that make up the coat, the cape, are not the same as way the way she looks. It's a different mm -hmm. outfit. Yeah. And we were just critiquing Eureka about that. And I don't... Uh-huh. Don't hate it here? Right. Yeah. I don't hate it here. I don't know why. 
Maybe because it's a cape and not the dress, and it's not like hitting us over the face with it. Maybe uh, that's what it is. That could be. Maybe because it's not a, on a big ass purse and on the dress and all over it, and it's like several <laughs> of the same picture, like several fucking times. It's not a continuous pattern, like over and over and over again, um, in four colors. Yeah, that's fair. I think this is elevated. Yeah. Like, so if I had to rank the three face looks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ginger's on top, Pandora's in the middle, and Eureka's on the bottom. Because Pandora Fair. at least has props like that kind of are fun and whimsical, and she definitely went more of a comic route. And not funny, yeah. haha comic, but comic book y kind of pop mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. of the extra like that the fascinator that says box on the front and Uranus on the back, that made me laugh. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Like, so, I mean, I think there were good elements of it. The only thing I think that would have helped is, yes, the dress doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what to do about that. But, like, I also feel like perhaps the boots should have had some color splash on them in, mm-hmm. some, in some way. I don't know which way, but like just accents. Like you didn't need your, you don't need to put your fi- picture on your boots, girl. Like that, we've already, we no. got it. We got it. We got it. We, we got, got it. it. Um, But Pandy looks just, great as a redhead, you know? Yeah. She's a ginger I just, and she looks good in red and it's another good red wig. So I'm just like, mm-hmm. yeah. I am, I, I will give, I give this a serve, but it's, an, it's my soft serve for this. I just did not, it wasn't great, but it was definitely better. Yeah. Um, You know, so it just occurred to me, I would have liked this dress better if it was form fitting. So you could keep Mm. the color, you could keep the concept, you can keep the broad black, like outline, and you can have the two Mm -hmm. green panels, but girl, I want it cinched. I want it form fitting like a mini dress and I mm-hmm. want the wrap on the back side. So if you take the coat off and you walk away from the judges, that's the, that's the, the kiki ha ha like element yeah. where it says wrap Agreed. over your booty hole. <laughs> Agreed. Cause then yeah, I would have liked it as like a, as like a, like a mini, like that mini skirt, like that one tube dress kind of feel. Right. That was very form fitting. Maybe that's what I'm like not liking. It's also, a, I think it's just too long. Yeah, it's not the right yeah. length. It's 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 hitting too high above the knee, or too low if it's meant to be like a like a scoochy mm-hmm. shifty mini skirt. kind of like. Yeah. Yeah. It's just not. Yeah. It's the same length as the mm. cape or the coat, and that's where I think part of the issue is. That's why I, it just occurred to me if it had been form fitting and it had showed off her shape underneath the the cape, then I would have liked it more. And then I thought it would have been appropriate, like I said, if she took the coat off as she walked away, or mm-hmm. right before she turned to walk away from the judges, and then you saw whap <laughs> on her butt. I think that would have been fun. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't know. Anyways. So I, I do. I give it a serve, but I guess I'm giving it a serve because I don't hate it or I'm not disgusted or annoyed with it. <laughs> it's just It just needs some edits, some enhancements. Uh, next up, Ms. Raja P. O'Hara. So. Uh-oh. 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 She's getting ready. Everybody hold on. Mm-mm. Grab your earrings, girl. <laughs> So this is nerve, because this is garbage. Okay. Okay. This is this is this is this is this was this was something thrown together last minute to make the theme work. Mama, this it is, is not garbage. pop art. Go ahead, keep go ahead. Repeat, repeat Mama, it. This is repeat garbage. it. Mama, this is garbage. <laughs> yes. I, I don't know. I I don't know where you got pop art, where you went and researched pop art. I don't know who your design. Well, I think you make your own stuff, so it was you that made this. Um, you threw a bunch of things together and hoped that it would work. 
is what I see here. I'm going to throw this coat on that has my face on the back. And then I'm going to throw my boots on that I wore in my entrance. I clocked that immediately. Right. Um, and then I'm going to have a fan that I think also has her picture on it. Right. It's one of her merch. Items. And now, and my other thing, uh -oh. and I'm just going to call this out. Uh -oh. um, don't you dare put a wig on as like a headpiece <laughs> and not color the rest of your fucking head. No. No mama, no mama, no. We do not do that. You had this purple ass, like 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 this curly thing, which I thought was kind of cute. Like it's kind of like a up, like not really updo, but like if you if you were doing like a fade, it would be like the like curly like fro on top, and it's kind of cute. But all the rest of your hair, mm -hmm. your real natural hair is showing, mm -hmm. and you didn't do anything to it. To my, to my knowledge, right. to what I've seen. So you got this, your dark black hair going into a purple wig that has no to discernible like right. color at the roots to kind of give you that illusion mm. that it's your hair. Right. And then, like, you had the gall to, like, throw something on and then write it in Sharpie on this fucking thing in the middle. Like, what the fuck was that? I don't even... Uh, like, ooh. This had me heated. Like, what is this? Like, well, this is this is what I said. This is something you threw up. Threw, threw, threw up. Ha! <laughs> um, threw together last minute. We all have choices. Some of us make the wrong ones. <clears throat> so I'm going to agree with you. No, wait, you said this was nerve. I say it's a swerve. Mm. The, 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 I think the tea has not been spilled on this yet. Something went wrong. Because mm. this is not Raja O'Hara. This is not what she does. No. She tried super hard to sell it, but something went awry, and I don't know what it is, and I'm really, like, curious. Did, like, the outfit not make it, and so she knew if this came up as a runway, she was screwed? Did something happen in the workroom? Like, and mm. she just tried to, like, you know, did she try to fix it, bitch? When you don't have <laughs> <laughs> very many options, like... The moment she turned the corner and I saw it, I was like, what in the gay hell is she wearing? And not in a, like, disbelief, like, wow, I'm really taken. No, girl. Like, I just, I, I, it does look very hodgepodge thrown together, you know, and the, the bubble on the front of the outfit does look handwritten. It doesn't look like it was aesthetically a piece of it. The fact that she has this jacket blew me away because it's the most pop art of all the shit that she's got going in mm -hmm. this outfit. I mean, well, if we hadn't seen the boots in the entrance, then mm -hmm. that could would have helped. But we already saw them in the entrance. And I and I didn't clock the, the wig to the hair thing, but I agree with you. If she had just attempted to color her hair around the base of the wig to match the purple to attempt to make some type of a fade then maybe it wouldn't be as as like stark mm -hmm. but yeah i don't know what this nude semi like sheer body thing is with bedangles that she's wearing i just i don't know i don't know. i feel I, don't know. I, I i feel like that the the bodysuit was something she pulled she pulled to wear in a um, lip sync for your legacy. Mm. Yeah, you I know, don't... it's something she probably grabbed to like wear for that kind of thing, or yeah. maybe it goes under something. Yeah. Um. Um. Wait. No, that was a. Never mind. I'm just don't 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 overthink it. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, was that was that under her? her interest look because that would have been some shit too but no it's not no yeah she had no. the blue sweater the, the sweater blue um sweatshirt like hooded sweatshirt thing going yeah i don't so i don't know what the story is miss raja but this is this is this is a no like yeah 
Like this is yeah. this is a normal season. Oh shit! I need something for the runway. Mm-hmm. And if the rest of the queens had not delivered distinctly pop art looks, it would make me think that there was some production bullshit that happened. That like they mm-hmm. switched the 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 naming of the of the runway theme at the last moment. Do you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm, we mm-hmm. talked earlier this season about how Scarlet Envy said technically it was patterns, not clash of the patterns, which is why her dress did not technically make sense to the theme. Um, so yeah, mm. that's that. Last but not least, Miss Trinity K. Bonet. Mm-hmm. Girl, serve. It is. It's a serve. She, in fact. Serve, serve. Yeah. Like, it's 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 borderline nerve for me for the positive mm-hmm. because she turned the corner and strikes this stance and walks the entire time with a Black Lives Matter protest sign. And then when you pay closer attention to the outfit, it has mm-hmm. a woman of color wearing a trans pride colored wig and then in and then in within that i didn't catch it the first time i think until michelle made recognition or carson did that there were names written into Mm -hmm. the fabric print Mm -hmm. and and it's so well professionally done i mean it's just it's 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 really a high class kind of look and like you mentioned before this makeup helps deliver mm-hmm. this comic book aesthetic art style right up onto the face. Um, mm-hmm. You know, most of the time, no matter where she stands or where she sits, you get it. Like, like you understand what she's presenting artistically. Yes. Yeah. It's very good. Whoever made this for her or I don't know if she made it herself, I don't, you know, either way, yeah. just super well done. Um, so unique. I love the the names because the the names are in like that comic, uh, not comic sans, ha ha ha, um, that uh, that comic like font. Yes, it's meant to pay attention, and they're all over the dress. And also, I think there's Black Lives Matter and Black Trans Lives Matter, um, yeah, in there as well. And it's just you know, it's just a very good combination of a message and the art yeah um so yeah just really good i like the purple and yellow which are complementary colors yes mm-hmm. they, they work yeah. well Sorry. together yeah well they're complementary they're complementary yeah. colors yeah so it's just and and here's and, here, and i'll say this Girl, you got lucky. Because while you looked like Whitney, you did a horrible job of the challenge, and this runway saved your ass. Because if you'd pulled a Raja, like, nobody would want to keep you. Like, no one would see any reason for you to stick around. Sorry, girl. Got it in your, yeah. The whole, like, two wins thing would have gone right out the window. Mm hmm. Because you literally bombed and then bombed again. If you had bombed again on the runway. Right. Agreed. So that being said, uh, before we get into our last segment with snaps and eye rolls. um, So Ginger Minge ends up being the winner. Mm -hmm. And I was okay with that. Okay. I will. Yeah. I mean. Of, like I love Bussy because they do all these wonderful things, and one of the things that she did particularly was she made this whole like um, number of times the person was shown, and the number and, and and went over that with the number of times you saw Rue laughing at mm-hmm. that person. Right. And Ginger made Rue laugh the most. Yeah. But and as, it made as, sense. As Bussy points out, it's an edit. So mm-hmm. her whole her whole thing why she sometimes gets statistical about it is she wants to see if she can crack the code. Like mm-hmm. if you could tell before the actual portion of the show that airs, if you if you're paying a t- close enough attention, you could figure out, oh, this one's gonna win, this one's gonna lose, this one's going home. Like that there's like that there's some, you know, um secret society, like, you know, decoder ring mm. kind of aspect to, to the way the show is yeah. edited yeah, yeah. to give shit away. And I'm like, eh, maybe, but you know, so, well, so 
Ginger's the winner, and she gets to do the lipstick for your legacy. Um, and she, for some reason, decides that a Dolly Parton lookalike getup is the thing she wants to do for the <laughs> for the, the legacy. But there's a part of me that's like, well, we are getting to the end of the season. Like, we only have a couple shows left, so they're, we're starting to get to that part where they're probably running out of outfits. <laughs> like, options, I should say. Um, and what they want to present. So, and this silhouette cracked my ass up to no end. These lipstick assassins behind the scrim thing, like, everybody's trying to figure out who the hell that is by looking. And I'm like, you know these queens that are coming as assassins already know this, so they're not going to give away their, their like, who they are um, when, they, when they present themselves. And then, lo and behold, we get Miss Heidi in closet, which actually I was very happy and pleased mm-hmm. to see her. Uh, come back agreed uh, and i really liked this outfit like i thought it was fun um yeah i was like "Ooh!" so we got some velvet we got some latex boots we got this ridiculous hair like mm-hmm. she's definitely um serving something up so <laughs> sorry just the two of them on stage cracks me up like looking at ginger and looking at uh, heidi i'm like it's like <laughs> It's like the the princess, like, trying to fight the evil queen. (laughs) (laughs) That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. So um, it's it's an interesting matchup. And Mm -hmm. I even loved how Ginger decided to be a little shitty, like, sassy uh, and witty to Heidi by using her catchphrase, when I think oh, said about yeah. being ready or whatever. And mm-hmm. Heidi responded with like, oh, hell no, or whatever. Like, <laughs> <laughs> which I thought was funny. And I was like, okay, it's on. Like, Ginger's trying mm-hmm. to let it be known. Like, I-, I see you, bitch. I know you. Like, don't be thinking mm-hmm. that-, that I'm not aware in that case. Um, and, you know, I thought it was a pretty decent lip sync. Ginger does what Ginger does. Ginger made fun of, you know, trying to sing a sexy song when she knows she's not necessarily, you know, a, a, a sex kitten kind of thing. The fact that both of them squatted, there's some strange similarity stuff in this this lip sync. Um, yes. This is in here for a reason. So if you're not watching the, the video, people, you, what you're missing is in this photo, you can see what is going to happen. Like, mm-hmm. the, the sides are there that something is going not the way it's supposed to. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) And we end up with the boo-boo moment. Um, Uh uh, Unfortunately, Heidi's uh, hair on top, this ball, like, shaft tower thing, was meant to be a reveal. Um, And it's just unfortunate that it didn't play out the way it was expected to. Supposed to. But I don't yeah. know how she thought it was going to work because it was kind of obvious if you watched it in the show and then you go back and you watch it again. It's really <sighs> obvious to me that it is very delicately perched. Yeah. And I was like, so, girl, when did you think you were going to get away with taking it off? Like, <laughs> like I was I watched it when she was walking down the runway and I was like, is that bouncing? Uh-huh. Already? It's a weeble and a wobble and <laughs> Yep. Whoop, 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 whoop. And I was like, um, okay. Um either that's not staying on <laughs> or you're gonna like something. You're gonna do something. Like it's gonna just pop off. I don't know. Something. Girl, I just realized I would have howled my ass off if it was attached and she had a long ass like four foot braid like a thick ass black braid that was attached to that and it was like a mace do you know what i mean and it just kind of like dangles and she could like (laughs) use it to whip around and shit but like (laughs) bam (laughs) yeah that would have been funny but but i mean look she looks good with the ponytail like so when Mm -hmm. you know once the once the extra piece is gone and she you know Let's the ponytail down. Like, I mean, it looks good, you know? There's, yeah. You can't really complain I, about it. Again, I, I, I get, I think, like you said, I think it was meant to be a reveal. Right. That just came a little too early. Like, there was a pro- potential plan reveal. Yeah. But um, she, it came off too early. Yeah. I don't know. 
Ginger, my God. This woman and her faces. This is what I call mm-hmm. the sex doll face. Mm. <laughs> but she Ooh. is painted to the gods Ooh. with a big old hair. Like, it's just, it's, um. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then, of course, Heidi, you know, with the, the back bend and the ponytail. I mean, it's just, it was really good. You know, I didn't really have many, like, Ooh, mm-hmm. like, what the hell's going on in this moment kind of thing. So uh, I felt overall that, you know, it was a decent, um, you know, assassin performance. Agreed. So unfortunately, Pandora and Trinity are the two that are in the bottom. Mm hmm. Which is fair. Wait. No. Go ahead. I. Are you? Do you want to wait? No. I, yeah, I'll wait. It's obvious I have like, something girl, that I want to say you, about this, but yes, you do. <laughs> like I'm sitting here looking at you, Gary. Like you got know you got something to say. I really feel there should have been a bottom three. Because mm-hmm. I can't justify swapping Eureka one with after the other. Of them. Because. <gasps> Because Pandora's Kim Cattrall was not good in the Snatch Game, and Trinity's Whitney was not good in the Snatch Game. And so, while Trinity's outfit saved her, theoretically, it wasn't enough to keep her from being in the bottom. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's kind of the same thing for Pandora, so I really feel like Eureka should have been in the bottom with them Mm. i think she needs to be but i'll talk more about that later Mm -hmm. so uh ginger binge wins the lip sync for your legacy and picks pandora which we all i think kind of felt we knew that was going to come because we didn't Mm. necessarily see pandora making it to top three or top four Mm. so to me it was kind of a, a logical progression is is you know based on what was presented so far that being said, I do want to give kudos to Miss Pandora because the bitch done already won $60,000. You mean Ginger. Right. That's what I said, didn't I? No, you said Pandora. Oh, Ginger. Sorry. <laughs> I swear I said Ginger. <laughs> so she won the first time she got $5,000 for being the top queen of the week. Mm-hmm. Then she won 30000 for her legacy. Correct. Then she won another 5000 for this first Snatch Game of Love. And she won 20000 for the legacy. Correct. If she keeps going at this rate, she don't have to win the season. She will have already won the money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Yep. I'm quite proud of her <laughs> for I that. Very much. I'm sitting here like, so I went and mentioned that online. Like she's won about twenty, like sixty thousand dollars. I was like, oh shit, she has. It was actually one of the things that spoiled me on this episode. Oh. Um, now it happens. Um, yeah, it happens. Still. Like I, I don't watch it on. I don't watch it on Thursday. I have to watch. I have. I watch it on Fridays. Right. But still. Um, it it it's it is an accomplishment, and I I want to say, with the exception of maybe Shay, she's won the most. Hmm, I'm very just curious. Do you mean very... without actually winning? No, 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 no. Like Shay Kalei won. Um, yeah, before winning. Yeah, before winning. Sorry. <laughs> I was uh, like I was like you can't compare them if you count the fact that Shay won a hundred thousand. So like yeah, <laughs> boiler alert. Oh no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, no, I was thinking more along the lines of like the end of lip syncs and all that stuff because hmm. I feel like Shay won. No, Shay. So Shay only won twice. Huh. Okay. Sorry, I'm just going through. So she won 20, and then um, 
No, she only got 30. Okay, cool. Sorry, I'm just trying to look through and see who now, won what. I understand. The one thing I will say, if Ginger makes it to the top and she wins the season, she's going to clear 150. Mm-hmm. Possibly eke up to 200, which would be the largest winnings in drag race history by any queen, period. Mm. Which I'm sure would kind of irritate some queens. Mm-hmm. Because she had the opportunity to win that much, but technically they all have the opportunity to win that much, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's that. You ready to move on to our last segment? Sure thing. All right. All right, kids, it's time for a snaps and eye rolls, the hits and the misses, a.k.a. the highs and the lows of the episode. David, who are you giving snaps to? So um, I'm giving snaps to two things. Okay. Um, first of all, um, to Raja for taking the hint. Um, we talked about this earlier, but I really do think she took did a, I want to say, probably a much better job in the snatch game because she took mm. the the literal gift that um Miss Rue gave her right. during their talk back. Yeah. Um yes, did she use it a lot? Yeah, but she used it comedically. It worked. Um it was funny. I laughed, Rue laughed, then right. that's the point. Right. Um could she have done something else? I don't know. I'm very curious what her snatch game would have been like had she not heard that from Rue. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know if she knew that before she, you know, went in. Right. So that's kind of the thing. So there's that. Mm -hmm. But again, kudos for, again, taking the hint. Unlike, I'll put it like this, unlike Trinity, who was told, like, you need to make me laugh, you need to make it funny, you need to find a way to make RuPaul fun, or not RuPaul, Whitney funny, mm -hmm. and ended up not doing anything. Right. You were literally given, like, a joke to use, and you didn't even use it. Right. Like, you, like, Ru, like Whitney has a shit ton of, of song titles that you could have done something with and try to have a little fun with it. The I Have Nothing is a very appropriate one. Um, um, yeah, there's just, there's just stuff you could have done. Um, where did Broken Hearts go? You could have said something like that because there was a whole dating and love show. Anyway, moving right along. Um, my second snaps so are actually to Miss Heidi for the glow up. Okay. Uh, she looked amazing. Um, in this this episode, mm -hmm. um, that dress was a, was fabulous and it fit her frame. She looked gorgeous. Her makeup was on point. The hair was nice. Um, the 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 little like dimple or whatever you want to call it of hair um, that she put on and it falling off. Yeah, that kind of sucked. But I, again, I think it would you know it was gonna happen. Because obviously she didn't have any, she didn't think to have something to secure it in some way. And I think she assumed that by keeping her head like still, it would have been fine. But nah. nah, but that's okay. That's still the breaks. So that's the what happens with the queen who I think is I, still, while I appreciate the glow up, is still kind of learning. Mm -hmm. that's fair. So yeah. Gary, how about you? Um, I want to give snaps to Miss Kylie Sonique Love. And here's why. She really shocked me in Snatch Game of Love. First of all, I wasn't prepared for her to be Dolly Parton. Second of all, I was not ready for her to keep pace with Ginger Minge. Mm. So I said, my snaps are for Kylie staying in sync with Ginger because Ginger 
can be a force of reckoning, like especially in an improv comedy kind of situation. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they bantered back and forth and Kylie had these quips and like, mm-hmm. yeah, some of them were obvious Dolly Parton isms, like, mm-hmm. like referential things. She had no problem, like just staying in the game and being like, you know, incredibly like active and, you know, paying attention. Um, and, you know, and it was really, really surprising to me. I mean, yeah. I know I, I nitpicked, you know, a little on, on the Queen's, but, you know, when there's less of you and you get more camera time, shit starts to become obvious mm-hmm. um, and like a little annoying. Uh, yeah. Not that I would necessarily forgive it in a regular season, but this is all stars. So I'm expecting I'm expecting you, especially in the second half of the season, to be like perfection, which is mm. very unfair. However, that's the only way you're going to win. Like you can't, you need I'm, to, you need to not have mistakes and fuck ups, basically. I, I'm, I, I'm expecting you to be, to be great. Mm. Like I, I don't. Th- like you said, this isn't a, a regular season. This is all stars. Right. You, in some ways, you have the coin. You have the like the talent. You had the skills. You should anyway. Mm-hmm. You should have grown up and glowed up, like we say, enough to like move forward. That's why you're here. Right. So I expect better results. Yeah. I expect it to be difficult. I want it to be difficult. I don't need to see knowing. Knowing. I don't want to get into the challenge knowing who the top and the bottom is. Right. Yeah. That's fair. So that being said, Damon, who are you eye rolling at? Um, I forgot what I wrote. Oh, okay. So this one is actually in the main show, but this is more in the Untucked. Mm-hmm. There was so much fucking filler in Untucked. I, I was mad. Oh. Like it just it there was while I I get it, there were some conversations that needed to be had. Like there was the conversation I think between um Pandora and someone else. I, I forget that. But there was just like this whole like moment and then they're like, let's let's do they were doing impersonations of each other and there's just like these other things and uh, the whole big product placement with barefoot wines, I was so over that. Like we did not have to do that like fifty fucking times. Like it just mm-hmm. felt like so much. Um and but there are these conversations that again haven't really been brought up and haven't been discussed and haven't really had an issue or impact on what's going on per se. Right. That I felt like, why are we doing this now? Untuck could have been 15 minutes. If that. Mm. Cause there's just, there's just so much in there that wasn't really to me necessary. Okay. Um, oh, and one other thing just because I, I have a star and I was really, it pissed me off the most. So they show Heidi coming up on stage for like, you know, the lip sync for your legacy. Heidi is wearing, she is not wearing the dress, like the, the, the reveal. She's got her boots on and the, um, like the, the bottom of the dress that she pulled off to show the um, the leotard underneath. Okay. And she did not have the 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 bun on. There was a moment in in Untucked where there there she comes she like she comes to the mirror with the long ponytail out and just the leotard on, and they give her the lipstick and she puts it in her boot. Mm-hmm. And then she goes up on stage. Like, it's the lipstick thing that we all know is fake because right. it's not the real same lipstick because uh, they don't put the like the cover on it. So why the fuck they do it anyway? Um, right. And then she, they bring her up on stage and they have her standing there in front of the um, the sliding door. And she is in the reveal outfit. She is not in the um, outfit we saw when she was actually revealed. I guess I didn't catch that. Interesting. Oh. 
I did because it pissed me the fuck off because the whole point of the whole reveal, I mean, I get it that it was untapped and we've already seen it, but like it's a sign to me that this was meant to be filler and mm-hmm. someone wasn't paying attention or didn't think. I don't know why they had this moment of her with everything down. Was this like a practice or what? Like what was going on? Obviously, like they had, you know, it's like, what were they doing? What was going on? Why was this a thing? Right. Because it was clear to me that this was a different, you know, outfit. It was, well, it's not a different outfit. It was the same outfit. It was just the revealed look. Right. With all the terror rays and the wig. You know, Maybe pop. they shot it like afterwards. Do you know what I mean? Like they, like after everybody was off the main stage or whatever, they had Heidi go back and reshoot from behind. And maybe that's what they do with all the queens. And they, nobody caught the the inconsistency of her look. But maybe. at the same time, I also wonder if maybe they do record it live from behind, but something went wrong, like mm. with the with the with the yeah. recording or whatever. And so they had a redo, and they weren't paying paying attention to the you know mm-hmm. to the consistency or whatever yeah like continuity yeah. that's what it is yeah continuity yeah well whatever it was it, it was like i said it was another thing that like just like yeah. come on get it together yeah get that's it fair. together okay gary <laughs> so this is like i want to keep this as short as possible i don't want the show to go on forever but this is my this is this is where my beef is. And this is why I said something in Telegram cuz I am like super irritated at this point. So I will ask this question. Why was her ass saved again? Could someone please explain to me why Eureka is safe? She has not one she, her ass needs to be in the bottom. Honestly, her ass needs to be at the bottom, and she needs to get the boot. So this is where I'm all pissed off about. Come next week, episode nine, Eureka better step her pussy up, or she better get the fuck off this this stage and out of the out of the game, game show. Because she, all she's done is give good confessional. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not disregarding like her skills and what she's presented and her looks, but it is not been blowing me away recently and it is like she is just there to collect a paycheck like it's a foregone conclusion that she deserves to make it to the top and or she's just you know she's here and she's successful and she has money like i don't see what the big deal is (laughs) it is a big deal bitch because you're not impressing me so i need you in episode nine to either like make me think that you deserve to stay or you need to fucking go because mark my words, if that fat bitch wins, I'm going to be pissed. Because it will not be a legitimate big girl win, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. That's what I have to say about that. Mm-hmm. I feel the same. I feel similar. I'll put it like this way. <laughs> I won't say I feel the exact same because, ooh, you have some feelings. <laughs> I'm just so annoyed with her at this point. I'm understand. like, what the fuck, girl? Like... You deserve to be in the bottom. I think your divine was wrong. Like, I don't think you did divine wrong. I just think it was wrong for Snatch Game. Like, it was such a weird experience yeah. and yeah. kind of crazy. Just... And everybody was uncomfortable. And nobody yeah. knew what was happening or what was going on. And I like... get that that's part of what you were trying to deliver, but it was a little too successful. Yeah. So, yes, that. And then... Her like it was I won't call it a confrontation, but her asking Pandora about that and Pandora kind of I'm gonna uh, fuck it I'm gonna call it like it is backtracking mm. on the the feelings because Eureka was that there, there was something about her divine that was 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 much mm-hmm. was too much it was too fucking much and it it just didn't land right yeah uh i'm also going to clock something that happened right at the very beginning of the episode because i had to go back and pause it and look at it like several times okay um mama your outfit your beach ball like bikini was a diaper i tried telling you last week i was like there is some shit going on with this outfit there's something not right about it i didn't i didn't see it at first 
But when they're walking into, like, after the elimination, like, right after, like, the credits roll or whatever, and they, they're come walking in, Eureka kind of walks into the, into the frame first, and she's walking to the couch to sit down. And you can see there's this very clear gap in the back between her leg, her butt cheek, and this dress, this, 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 um, swimsuit. Swimsuit. God, where's her? I'm so mad. It's okay. <laughs> it pissed me off. I was sitting there like, you've got to be kidding me. Mm-hmm. Like, not only were you wearing this on the on All Stars Six runway, but it don't even fucking fit. Like, no. Right. No. Yeah. And I just. And again, kind of like with like. Again, there are certain things also like her. We we saw the like the divine dress, very much that pink flamingos, like big red like dress. We get that, got it. But she obviously had the reveal, and you could tell because right under, right where her dress was, because of the way it was cut, you could see the black, big black back um, um, strap of the um, like halter top she was wearing. And it was just like, Jesus Christ, can we, like this, this feels like you're doing like a, a regular season. And don't get me wrong, you were pretty good at first. And maybe it's because you maybe didn't think you were getting this far. I don't know. Something was going on and I just didn't, I don't like it. I agree with you. Eureka needs to go. I think the true like tops of the season are Ginger, Trinity, Kylie, maybe Raja. If Raja doesn't have any more fuck ups, yeah, on the runway. So I went yeah. back and looked because I thought the black straps and the divine outfit were meant to be there because that's what was in the original in the movie, but that is not the case. Cause I just went and pulled up no. the pictures and I was like, Nope, not, not a no. black bra strap to be found anywhere. Chickadee. Like that was a fuck up on your part. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, but I'm not surprised because honestly, I've been seeing that kind of shit from the girls all season, like that their undergarments keep showing. And I don't understand why mm-hmm. I'm like, what, what is going on here? Ladies get it together. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I can think of, and it's just me going like on hold the whole COVID trip is we didn't have time to do fittings or we couldn't do fittings in person or whatever. Something, something, something. COVID. (laughs) (laughs) Girl, let's do something, something COVID. Yeah. Anyway. Do you know what's sad is how many people have cosplayed as Divine from the movie and they look better than Eureka did? That's pretty sad, children. I'm just saying that some of them have done better at a cosplay than she did for Snatch Game, but what the fuck do look I at all, know, apparently? All that, look at all that. Can you feel, <laughs> all that, can you feel it? Yeah. <laughs> just, so again, oh. episode nine, whatever the hell's happening next week, girl, I think you need to go just gonna say because i don't i don't see the point in you staying any longer for me you've worn out your welcome that's how it is Mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily about what i think or what damon thinks what do you think you should let us know there's several ways you can do that you can go to our blog cubsoutloud.com you can send us an email cubsoutloud at gmail.com or you could give us a ring you could actually call us leave us a message we would love to listen to it we might even play it on the show if you wanted if us to want us to yeah <laughs> so please call us at 361 coll talk that's 361-265-8255 and uh, when it comes to social media outlets just type in comes out loud as one word you can pretty much find us in most places um on youtube there is a playlist specifically for comes out loud drag race which is all 100 and now 30 episodes as of this episode Ooh. girl 
That's a lot of shows. Um, mm -hmm. If you would like to uh, join our discussion online about drag race things, uh, you can go to tinyurl.com forward slash telegram. That's T-E-L-E-G-R-A-M dash C-O-L-D-R. Uh, you could also find out about when our regular shows are going to be airing live for recordings. And that's at tinyurl.com forward slash calendar dash C-O-L. If you would like to support us, there's several ways to do it. You can uh, get merch from the zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud store where you can get several different items. Uh, for example, if you would like a uh, shirt that is drag pride inspired that uh, shows, as we're kind of showing off here, the pink crown and the pink, blue, and white stripes that says consent is my foreplay. Um, those are available at the Zazzle.com uh, website. If you like our Cubs Out Loud Drag Race logo with the bear head uh, and it has a crown and in pink letters it says Drag Race, there are several items, including apparel. Uh, Damon happens to have a lovely uh, coffee cup that is two-tone that uh, has a pink handle with a matching pink interior. Um, and there are other items as well. There's even a purse. Um, I can't remember what else on there. all up in that interior. <laughs> just i'm not nope not gonna say it this time uh <laughs> and there's other ways that you could uh help support cubs out loud you can become a patron at patreon.com slash cubs out loud for a dollar a month you get full access uh to our episodes including the pre-show and the post show um so you kind of hear a bit of the behind the scenes or in this case is today you get to hear us talk more about food Mm -hmm. um, if you would uh, like to just give us a tip, we would gladly accept it. You could go to paypal.me slash cups out loud for a one time donation to help us keep, you know, the, the lights on, as they say, when it comes to that. Our goal. Yeah. Did you just. Girl. <laughs> Anyways. But that's still too fucking bright. Okay. <laughs> if you would like to uh, help promote Cubs Out Loud, you can rate us on Apple Podcasts. Five stars, please. We would love that. Um, you can pretty much find us anywhere online. Google Play uh, podcast. You can subscribe, you know, Stitcher, Radio, Pandora, maybe. I don't know. Pretty much anywhere that podcasts are at. You'd be able to load us into your app. Uh, you just need to go for Cubs Out Loud Drag Race. It is its own separate audio feed. So it's just Drag Race uh, episodes, if you're interested in that. Damon, if they were to find you online, where would they look? Excuse me. Pardon size. I'm a little yawny tonight. Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at TheaterCup79. That's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9. On most bear-related sites are on Facebook. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. I specifically have a Twitter account that's GareBear73Drag uh, with a D-R-A-G at the end because that's how I kind of keep track of things that are going on in the drag universe. Um, so that way it doesn't get spoiled on my other Twitter stuff. Mm -hmm. And even then I still get surprised because some people, they just randomly like a queen's thing and it suddenly pops up in my timeline. So then I got to block the queen. And if I like them, I have to go follow them on my other account. <laughs> I'm just trying to avoid spoilers. Um, yeah, is, I, is where that comes from. So I, I do have a critique. Um, RuPaul, like your Twitter, all those things. Like, can you give a bitch 24 hours? Nope. Can you give bitch an hour? Nope. Like, can you? Can you? <laughs> like, they can't. <laughs> like, they treat everything on. like the finale. They just gotta spoil it now. Uh huh. Damn. Because that's who will sometimes spoil me, like, really with the quickness, is, like, the the official RuPaul's Drag Race Twitter. What usually has spoiled me in the past is their YouTube channel for mm. WoW Presents because I oh, watch yeah. it on my Apple TV. And in the app for YouTube, if you go over the thumbnail of the episode, some episodes show you, like, little – like, every oh, so many clip. seconds – and uh -huh. invariably, the Whatcha Packin' with Michelle Visage will show you who she's interviewing or talking to, which is obviously the queen that went home. So, yep. And I've forgotten that sometimes. <laughs> and uh -huh. I'm like, motherfucker. Um, yeah, and it's well, worse fuck. now because Paramount Plus has the show airing in the morning of Thursday, and I don't watch it until after work wow. Thursday night. So mm -hmm. at least 12, if not 16, 18 hours have gone by or some crap. And, you know, 
yeah, everything's gone out. Like yeah. all the shit has gone out. So yeah. you know who the you know you'll see like the lip sync. They'll show that shit. They'll give you a um, like you'll get the what you're packing. You'll show that shit. You'll know who that is. Sometimes you'll get the pit stop like pretty much really quickly, so you know who they're interview with. And so depending on like the you know the the um, sample that they show. Like sometimes you yeah. know who's who's in the bottom or who's the lip sync, you know, who won, who's in the bottom, yada yada. I find it interesting that most of the stuff comes out on the day of. So like, the the pit stop, like the regular show, the untuck, the pit stop, and the what you packing all come out on the same day. They don't space them out at all. And then the fashion photo review with Raja and Raven doesn't come out until the Wednesday before. It's like the day before the next episode. And I'm like, mm-hmm. that's really kind of weird. Like, why don't you guys space it out? Like, one a day over time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, put out the regular episode and the untuck. That's fine. And then, like, the day after, you could put out, like, the what the uh, pit stop. And the day after that, you could put out what you're packing. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, so there's a little something every day that kind of strings you along. But instead, like, the most of the majority of it's, like, on one day, you know. And of course, mm-hmm. I follow all of it or gobble all of it up. That yeah, mm-hmm. so yeah. But that being okay. said, uh, that's the end of this episode. We're moving on to episode nine. Um, I don't remember what happens next week. Do you? Um, no, I don't remember. I feel bad, but I don't remember. Uh, Whoopsie. There's only five of them. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to remember what the what the deal is for next week's episode and it's kind of sad that i don't remember <laughs> what mm. we're only down to four episodes to go yeah oh apparently well according to the fan wiki online it's it's still tba huh but i feel like the preview already gave us insight as to what the hell's happening i don't think it did maybe that's why we don't remember um ah. I don't need an hmm. ad. What is this? Oh, it's Coven Girl. <laughs> Snatchler. Oh wait. Yeah, oh, they don't oh, have... oh, oh. Drag Tots the voiceover stuff. Oh where they're animated characters. Oh, that's right. Yeah. It says Maxi challenges to transform themselves into live action characters inspired by the drag tots. Which Mm. I noticed in the preview clip, there are six characters, but only five queens in the room. Is this going to be our final fucking game within the game bullshit? I don't know. I'm thinking, I don't think that's actually the game within the game. I think that's something else. I don't know what the hell it is, but I think it's something else and we're all fucking annoyed and over it. Um, Make that the fucking character. (laughs) So, I think... I think there's six characters and the five queens pick amongst the six characters. So it's not exactly a one to one or it is a one to one, but there's going to be a six person, but we don't quite know what that is. So I don't know if that was a mm-hmm. news, like in the edit giveaway or what the story was. So, yeah. but next week is episode nine. And then we only have three more uh, after that 10, 11, 12, because it's a 12 episode, you know, 13 episode season. 12. Oh, I think, I well, right. the Wikipedia says 13. Really? Yep. Oh, nope. That's number of contestants. I'm looking at the wrong thing. Sorry. Don't mind me. No, okay. that's fine. I was like, I'd be really intrigued if, if like one site says one thing and a different site says nothing. Cause then I'd be like, oh, well y'all need to get your shit together. Like how many episodes are there in this season? <laughs> don't mind me. <laughs> yeah. So there's only, there's just the 12, but we're down to five. So presuming another queen goes home next week, then they would be down to four at the mm-hmm. end of episode nine, which would still leave us with 10, 11, 12 episodes, like episode 10, yep. episode 11, episode 12. So most likely there's going to be a double save of some sort, like nobody goes home or somebody comes back. Like it's the only way this kind of works out mathematically. And then we go from there. Mm. So we shall see. But until then... Have a good one, children. We'll be back in a week. See ya.
Buy Pandora. Yeah. We, I think we all knew it was going to happen. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to be realistic. No, I, Jim Jim said poor Pandora. Hmm. Poor Pandora. Oh. Yeah. Well, uh, uh.